Yo, what's up, everybody? It is Tuesday. Hang on. February. Ah, wrong way. It is Tuesday, February 21st. I think I made a video earlier. And I said it was Tuesday, February 22nd. Well, obviously I was wrong. Uh, I gotta focus more on the dates. Alright, bad day, bad day. Everybody can see that it was a bad day, but I told you that this was coming. I said that February 15th was going to be the peak in fiscal flows, and then we get into this period of tax drain, and that's normally a negative period, March, April, where we have uh, quarterly corporate income tax drain, and then the uh, dreaded April 15th. But I want to talk about that. And somebody asked me a question and asked me to explain why I am less negative this year compared to last year or less negative going into this tax drain uh, than I would normally be. The main reason for that is that the fiscal flows have really accelerated. Just on a side note, I want to mention that I, I saw um, comments today on Twitter they, this guy, Mike Wilson, who's the big scary bear at Morgan Stanley, you know, he's been bearish for a long time based on the monetary policy because everybody, of course, looks through the lens of monetary policy. But he's saying there's 26% more down uh, in the stock market. And he said that the, this, is a, a, this is a bear market rally since October because it was based on an expectation of the Fed uh, pausing or, or something like that. But actually there was really no expectation in the market. If you look at where Fed fund futures were over this course since October, there was no expectation of a pause. It was maybe a slowdown in the pace of the rate hikes in terms of like the magnitude, but there was no uh, built-in expectation of a pause but what he totally misses and of course it's understandable because what all these monetarist people miss is that what happened in October it was that the fiscal contraction of 2022 last year which I told you was gonna happen at the end of 2021 I said we're coming into this the fiscal contraction at the in October 2022 ended and we started to revert back into a fiscal expansion and that's what uh, created an economic rebound and it's what created the, uh, the rise in, in the stock market. So these people who are monetarists, which is basically I'm talking about everybody, with the exception of anyone who comes to this channel and watches me, you know, they're going to always frame everything in the context of monetarism and they're going to say like, well, the rally must be because or must have been because people thought the Fed was going to pause. No, the rally, and it's ongoing, by the way, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. The rally was because we saw a, 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 a an end to the contraction in the fiscal slowdown and then it reversed up and and to my subscribers like I've been sending out graphics on this for a while showing that them that this is an uptrend now having said that I also told you guys that February 15th would be the peak in the fiscal flows and we'd have a correction based on you know we're going into this period of tax drain but I'm not so bearish and I first of all I think today was a total total overreaction I mean we're not even into the tax train period yet that's going to start on March 15th but I mean the only thing I found in the news today was you know rate fears and um, there was some I guess cautious guidance by some stocks Walmart uh, Home Depot, ba ba ba. I did a video earlier about how you shouldn't trust what CEOs or, or corporate execs are saying about guidance because, you know, they're not predictors of the future. They go by their book. And as far as the the rate hike jitters, yeah, we got. I guess the uh, the ten year got up to like three ninety four or something like that. I don't know. Last time I looked, I mean, we've been here already, and we know. 
or you should know if you've been listening to me and uh, for sure if you're a subscriber of my report you should know that this rape environment has only been leading to a massive massive fiscal expansion via the the interest income transfers I mean we're now up 200 billion if you look at the discount on, on T-bills and new issues, if you look at uh, interest on Treasury securities alone, you know, we're up $200 billion over last year. That, that's like a really decent, and you know, where are we now? We're in February, we're going to be in March, so March, April, May, June, July, August, September. We got, we're five months, we're less than half the way into the fiscal year. And, uh, you know, we've added, and I'm not even counting like Social Security and, and other stuff, Medicare increases that were cost of living adjusted, but like interest alone was a 200 billion additional stimulus that's gone in so far. And that's just going to continue to increase. So the, 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 the jitters or the, the, you know, the panic over the interest rates, to me, that's just you know it's par for the course because everybody is a monetarist and they think that that is the controlling factor when in fact they don't even really understand the implications of rate adjustments I mean their price adjustments and their fiscal transfers one way or the other so you get a day like today when a market's down 700 points look I could understand if it was a tax drain period and you literally had, you know, financial balances of the economy reduced by, you know, normally these, these tax drain periods, we see like a hundred billion or more in a couple of days, in a week, like drained out of the economy. Yeah, it just leaves, it just leaves financial balances, you know, with so much less that there's really no buying power for the market. But to go down 700 points on a day because rates are going up or because some CEO is saying like we, we're a little bit cautious about the outlook. I mean, to me, that's, that's just a gift, you know, like I, I, I actually, unfortunately, I don't have any free investable cash right now. I'm fully invested. And by the way, I should add that my personal portfolio it just, well, today was down, obviously, but it just came off an all-time record high because I was buying through that whole dip last year. And, um, you know, I mentioned earlier in a video I did that Germany, German stock market at an all-time high, France stock market at an all-time high, uh, and those markets bottomed in October of 2022, exactly when the U.S. fiscal uh, situation reversed. So it's, a, it's only a matter of time before we see the same thing here. And again, I just caution on the, uh, the debt ceiling situation, which is going to have to be resolved, which I think will be resolved. But, and we had, you know, we had the Putin speech today, which I'm not going to get into that because that's political and, and I don't do this uh, channel for um, political opinion. But uh, that might have scared some people. I, I frankly, me personally, I, I'm just I'm against war. Period. Okay. I think things should be diplomatically negotiated. Leave it at that. I'm not going to get into it on whose side I, I'm on. But as far as the economics is concerned, look, I just traveled. I told you I came back from this trip, and the trip was was. I mean, it was amazing in a lot of different ways, maybe it, it, mostly in, in how it just made me think like, what the hell am I doing? Like exposing myself to such hardship and difficulty. I don't even know if I, if I got anything out of it. I definitely learned skills of uh, kind, kind of like primitive survival or, or wilderness survival. I learned skills, no question about it. You know, uh, starting a fire, um, making a shelter, um, purifying water, you know, getting water, you know, all these kind of things. Um, smoke signaling, 
you know, rescue signaling, a lot of stuff. But I mean, I don't know, man. It's just like, did it make me tougher? Did it make me more resilient? Did it make me um, more, uh, you know, uh, mentally in control of my emotions? I, I think I was freaking out a lot of the time because... I was cold and wet and I couldn't sleep and I don't know. I, I was able, I'll tell you this, what happened from that. I learned, I think I learned a little bit how to compartmentalize my, my thoughts like, not to digress, but during the night when I was sleeping out in the woods underneath a tarp, I didn't have a tent and I had a shitty, I told you this story, I had a crappy, shitty sleeping bag that I just bought I had no idea and it didn't I couldn't get in it I, I just put it on top of me the only thing I could do was think like just make it through the next 30 minutes I didn't even want to look at my watch because I knew if I looked at my watch I'd have I still have like six or seven hours until daylight daylight and there was no uh, real light to be expected because the forecast was for more rain and clouds and cold but anyway uh, I digress. So, look, these, these things are going to happen. I mean, we, we got periods. I, I, I show you how these things work. It's all about these fiscal flows. Today was a, a, an overly, I think today was an overly bad day for the, the fundamentals, the reality of what we saw today. I mean, there was no tax drain. You know, rates went up. Big deal. We saw rates higher than this. We know what the rate hikes are doing. They're just adding to these fiscal flows. So, I mean, to sell the market off 700 points today, to me, it just, it was overdone. That doesn't mean that we won't have, um, you know, some, some additional corrective activity in March and April. I mean, though, that's real, okay, when you get into that tax train period. But the other thing I want to mention, and I think I did mention in a prior video, is like keep your eye on the dollar. The dollar was up a little bit today, but in, in last year, if we would have had a day like today with the market down 200 and interest rates popping up, you would have had a major rally in the dollar. And you're not having that anymore, and I think that's a reflection of the fiscal expansion, again, you know, that we're in. So keep your eye on that. I happen to be right now, um, I'm short the dollar. I was long the dollar coming into this period. Now I'm short. And uh, we'll see what happens, but I think today was a total overreaction. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet, because we still have tax drain in March and April. But if we end up discounting a lot of that tax drain now, I think that's going to be a good thing. And me personally, if I had spare investable cash right now, I'd be buying into this dip. No question at all. Anyway, that's it for today, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.